فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد ان شاء الله تعالى today's benefit is going to revolve around the verse uh, the verses that are in surah al-qasas from verse 40 8 to 50. قال الله عز وجل الله سبحانه وتعالى he says فلما جاءهم الحق من عندنا قالوا لولا أوتي مثل ما أوتي موسى أولم يكفروا بما أوتي موسى من قبل قالوا سحران تظاهرا وقالوا إنا بكل كافرون قل فأتوا بكتاب من عند الله هو أهدى منهم التبع قل فأتوا بكتاب من عند الله هو أهدى منهما أتبعوا إن كنتم صادقين فإن لم يستجيبوا لك فاعلم أنما يتبعون أهواءهم ومن أضل ممن اتبع هواه بغير هدى من الله إن الله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين. These verses that I've just recited, the verse which I intend to go through and extract benefit from is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says, فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكَ فَاعْلَمْ فَاعْلَمْ أَنَّمَا يَتَّبِعُونَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ If they do not obey you, then know that they are following their whims and desires. And the reason why I read the ayah before it, or the ayat before it, the verses before it, was because the verses before it and the siyaq and the context shows that it is the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam speaking to and addressing the pagans. And the fact that the verse is in that context allows us to have a stronger understanding of what is being said here. And the fact that they accuse the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam وَرَمِيهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ بِالْعَظَائِمِ They accused him of great things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in those contexts he says فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكَ فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكَ If they don't obey you, then know that they are following their whims and desires. That verse فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكَ فَعَلَمْ أَنَّمَا يَتَّبِعُونَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ has been explained and it has been mentioned in clear what it's meant by it. And it's been explained in the ayah where Allah Taala says, فَذَلِكُمُ اللَّهُ رَبُّكُمْ And that is your Lord. فَذَلِكُمُ اللَّهُ رَبُّكُمُ الْحَقِّ That is your true Lord. فَمَاذَا بَعْدَ الْحَقِّ إِلَّا الضَّلَالِ What is after haq except misguidance? What is it that comes after haq except that is misguidance? The reason why I chose this is because that which Ibn al-Qayyim mentions rahimahullah in his great book As-Sawa'iq al-Mursalah and that is what made me think that this verse many people they need they need to understand it and that is the statement of Ibn al-Qayyim commenting on this verse in that book of his As-Sawa'iq al-Mursalah he says فَمَا هُوَ إِلَّا الْهَوَىٰ أَوْ الْوَحِي There is nothing except that it's either revelation from Allah or it's a whims and desires. كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَىٰ As Allah said in the Qur'an 
wa ma yantiqu 'anil hawa in huwa illa wahyun yuha that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he does not speak from his own whims and desires but everything that he says sallallahu alaihi alayhi it is what it is verily a revelation sent from high above Ibn al-Qayyim then goes on to say, فَجَعَلَ النُّطْقَ نَوْعَيْنِ Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He made the speech that come out of people's mouths. He divided it and He categorized it into two. نُطْقًا عَنِ الْوَحْيِ An utterance that is from the revelation. وَنُطْقًا عَنِ الْهَوَى And a utterance that comes from whims and desires. إِذَنْ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكَ If they don't obey you, and if they don't take what you tell them to do, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and they do not take you as, your, as their own model, then you need to keep in mind, O Messenger of Allah, that they are following their whims and desires. Because there's either one of two paths. It's, e it's either the revelation, or it's either whims and desires. And that is why these two verses are helping each other. فَمَاذَا بَعْدَ الْحَقِّ إِلَّا الضَّلَالِ what is, it, what, what is it that comes after the truth? Except that it's misguidance. And also this ayah, the ayah which is وَمَا It shows again that it's either revelation or it's whims and desires. Ibn al-Qayyim again, he mentions this in his kitab I'lam. In his I'lam al muqqi'in he mentions, he says, فَمَا لَمْ يَقُلْهُ سُبْحَانَهُ Anything in which Allah has not said. وَلَا هَدَى إِلَيْهِ and that which Allah has not guided to. فَلَيْسَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ It is not true. And it's not the haqq. Anything which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't said. Nor has Allah guided His creation to it. فَلَيْسَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ It is not from the truth. And then he brings the ayah to support him. The ayah that I read. فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكَ فَاعْلَمْ أَنَّ مَا يَتَّبِعُونَ أَهْوَاهُمْ That if they don't obey you, Muhammad, then know that they are following their whims and desires. al umura ila qismayni la thalitha lahuma. Ibn al Qayyim says that Allah divided the matters into two and not three. What is it? Ittiba' following lima dalla alayhi rasul sallallahu alayhi wa Following that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has indicated, had shown to us. One. And the second one is wattiba' al hawa, following whims and desires. So, my brothers and sisters who are watching this, Whenever you see yourself take a position in life, it is either you're following something that a revelation backs you on, or you're following a matter which is fully based on your own whims and desires. The same Ibn al-Qayyim says in his kitab, As-Sawa'iq al-Mursala, rahimahullah. He says, فَمَنْ تَرَكَ استِجَابَتَهُ Anyone who leaves off obeying the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِذَا ظَهَرَتْ لَهُ السُنَّةِ If the sunnah becomes clear to somebody, and then they leave of obeying the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam wa'adala anha ila khilafiha and he diverts from it to something other than the sunnah faqad ittaba'a hawahu then that person has followed he or she has followed her whims and desires so my brothers and sisters these ayat that I've mentioned and the statements of these great noble scholars or this great noble scholar is really something that makes us think well, what is it that I have chosen in my life? And what is it that I am doing right now? Am I following something that I am backed up from the Kitab and the Sunnah? Or am I following something that I am being backed up with my own whims and desires? And you tend to find a lot of youngsters and youth who are studying, maybe even elders. And you, you find this, Wallahi, not even the youngsters alone, but you find it in people you think to yourself that they are deeply rooted in knowledge that they will take opinions of the fuqaha opinions of the jurists in matters that there is what? there is no proof in it for them for example that statement of that imam either goes against a dalil which is wadah it goes against a statement and a, a proof that is strong or it even goes against an ijma' Or even it goes against something that is shibhu ijma'. It looks like an ijma'. It's close to being ijma'. But that person will not want to go with the, uh, the ayat and the Quran 
and the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which is clear, kashamsu fi rabi'atin nahar, that is clear as the daylight, as the sun is out there. He doesn't want to take that evidence, but rather he wants to stick with the opinion of that scholar or those scholars what they have said over the textual evidence. And my brothers and sisters, I don't want you to misunderstand me. I am not saying that matters that have difference of opinions and those difference of opinions are in the realm مما يسوغ فيه الخلاف that there can occur difference of opinion and it's, it's permitted for it to occur and it is difference of opinion that um, a person can take which of those opinions are seem strongest to him that's not what we're talking about here we're talking about Taking a qawl which is shad, a strange, strange opinion that goes against the, either the ijma' of the ummah or it goes against the nas, a text from, either from the kitab and the sunnah. And this qa'ida or these principles that we can take from this ayah because فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكْ If they don't obey the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then you're following your own whims and desires. How can one know that what they are following is whims and desires and it's not the haqq? There is a hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa that strengthens this, opinion, uh, this meaning. There's an ayah, there's a hadith of the Prophet that strengthens this uh, ayah and what it means. And that is the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa where he said, Al-birru matma'annat ilayhi nafs Righteousness and good is what the heart and the person finds tranquility in. وَاطْمَأَنَّ إِلَيْهِ الْقَلْبِ And the person's heart finds tranquility in it. The person's soul and the person's heart, they find tranquility in this. وَالْإِثْمُ مَا حَاكَ فِي النَّفْسِ And disobedience is, and evil is that which the, it reverberates in the heart. It reverberates in the heart, meaning it's not something you can what? You can digest. It's something that you keep thinking of. وَتَرَدَّتْ فِي الصَّدَّ You're regurgitating it and you're reverberating in your in your heart. It basically means that you're taking a, your shahwa is pushing you to this or a shubha is pushing you to this. Your whims and desires is pushing you to this so the soul will not find tranquility in it. And also, doubts are revolving around it for you. So you're not going to take the textual evidence that are put to you. my brothers, Wallahi, Go to Kitab Sayyidul Qatil by Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah. He talks about himself. Wallahi ma ajmala ma hakahu Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah an nafsi. Wallahi what's more greater and more. These words wallahi will touch you. What is he doing? Wahuwa yasifu halahu. He's describing to us his own situation, something that happened to him. And this is what he says. He says rahimahullah, he says tarakhastu fi shay'in yazuzu fi ba'd al-madahib. He says I became lenient. I became I became lenient and soft. In a matter that there was lenience in some madhahib, some of the madhabs, they had, they permitted it. And they allowed it. But he said, I just took it easy and I took the softest of the opinions and I took that on board. And then what happened? My heart started to become tainted. And I found hardness in my heart. So leaving off the textual evidence for a matter within the madahib is there. But because it goes against the Nusus al-Wahiyya in the Kitab and the Sunnah, Ibn al-Jawzi said, I found in my heart Qaswa. I found in my heart Qaswa. Allah wa ta'ala, He commands His Prophet. He's talking to a Nabi min anbiya'i. He says, Ya Dawood, inna ja'alnaka khalifatan fil ard. Dawood, we have made you a governor on this earth. Fahkum bayna nasi bil haqq. Judge the people with the haq. Do not follow whims and desires. Then it misguides you from the path of Allah. So this ayah tells us, Judge the people between them with the truth. And do not follow whims and desires. Then it's either haq. Or it is what? It is misguidance. There is no middle path. It is either the truth and it's the haqq. And it is either misguidance. Just like, فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكَ If they don't obey you, فَعَلَمْ أَنَّمَا يَتَّبِعُونَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ 
If they don't obey you, Muhammad, that they follow their whims and desires. Either revelation or whims and desires. And that is how clear and crystal clear it is. So, as a summary, I want brothers and sisters who are listening and seeing how we're extracting the benefit from this verse to realize don't apply the verse here right now. Don't apply it on al masail al shariya alati al khilaf fiha mu'tabar and it's ma'roof. There's difference of opinions in it. The difference of opinion here is considered. Don't apply it on the, the, the verse that we're talking about on that. Okay? I want you not to apply it on there. Also, the other point that I want people to keep in mind is that the rebuking and the scolding that this verse holds, it is the person who follows his whims and desires in the fatwa that is given to him. He goes between scholars and he says, Fulan, what did you say? Mm, I don't like it, I'm going to go to another one. And he goes fishing for fatwas that are in accordance to his whims and desires. Then he applies it on himself and he likes it and he rejoices it and he tells everybody about it. But if a person is a ammi, a lame man, or a le from the general folk, and he does not know the religion and a fatwa is given to him, but that fatwa is a weak fatwa, and he just takes it, then this ayah does not apply on him. But it is needed, my brothers, to know that you have one of two. To follow the haqq and the truth or to follow your own whims and desires. Make sure you strive to follow in the haqq and the truth and stay away from following your whims and desires. That is our benefit I wanted to share with you all. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.